morning and welcome to Ark and Dove Presbyterian Church in Odenton, Maryland. I'm Brian Boudreau, the Clerk of Session here at Ark and Dove, and your host in the lobby, the weekly program of the life and ministry of the church. So today is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. As part of the Harvesting Generosity series, I will be talking to Christian Ed Elder Sarah Fox in just a moment. Uh, but first, let's look at what's happening this week. Now, if you are new to Ark and Dove, there are uh, multiple ways that you can worship with us. We have in-person sanctuary worship that continues every Sunday at 1030 a.m. We just ask that you wear a mask in the sanctuary to ensure everyone's safety and please RSVP online to attend. Seating is limited. So that service is also live streamed to our YouTube and Facebook channel. So you're probably watching right now. Um, and Sunday school and godly play happens during this session at 1030. We ask you to register for that as well. You can just go to arkandove.org to sign up. Every other week we have an outdoor in-person service. So you just need to bring a chair. The next outdoor service will be October 31st at 9.15. So youth group uh, for the middle school and high school will meet tonight. Sixth through eighth graders will meet outside the church from four to five, and ninth through twelfth graders will meet from five to 6.30. Outreach and Connections is looking for volunteers to help set up and clean up for our Sunday fellowship snack table that we just started uh, doing. So contact Nicole Hal to sign up. Uh, now, did you know we have a crafting group? It's been a, several weeks, maybe even months since I've uh, announced it. Uh, well, they will be meeting tomorrow, October 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, they are a group of all kinds of hand crafters with all kinds of skills um, who meet on the third Monday of each month at 7 p.m. So you can contact Amy Tardiff for more details. The anti-racism and social justice team will be hosting a drop-in session on Tuesday, October 19th. Uh, you can contact Paula Sparks to get the Zoom link. And don't forget, on Tuesdays is the Logos program from 6 to 7 p.m. It's for kids pre-K through fifth grade. Julie Devers and Jen Roman can get you signed up for that. There are lots of Christian ed opportunities this fall, and you can find out more by scanning the QR code that's in the bulletin. Um, the Ark and Dove Book Club will be meeting next on November 12th at 7, 7 p.m. via Zoom. And of course, they will get together to discuss the book. Right? The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. Um, so that discussion will be led by Kathy Emmert. And I'm only telling you several weeks ahead uh, because if you're like me, uh, you need some time to read the book. In our series, Harvesting Generosity, I'm talking today to Christian Ed Elder, uh, Sarah Fox. So welcome, Sarah. You've been uh, quite a regular on this program <laughs> we have so much uh, going on in Christian Ed. So welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. Wonderful. So, so let's talk about Christian Ed and what that encapsulates. Christian Ed is for all at the church. Um, we have our adult education portion. Um, I'm really excited because we've launched a new site to um, advertise our different course offerings. Um, these include Bible study on Wednesday mornings done through Zoom. Um, our different book studies. Um, we've had our Sunday outdoor sessions. Um, we had a Mythbusters session this summer, which um, got rave reviews from the participants. Um, our book club, our recent one, was um, exploring the gravity of joy. Um, and there were the attendees there had wonderful conversations. Um, we've had sessions on centering prayer and different ways to pray. That we've also started to collaborate with the Gleam and the anti racism teams at church to streamline our offerings and make sure that all of the leaders from those different uh, ministry groups are being represented and that that's being advertised to the entire congregation. Um, I'm getting excited for planning for the Advent season and all of the different um, educational opportunities that will be available. We also have our Logos program um, and that is for our school age children, um, K, well, pre-K, through uh, fifth grade. And the, that's happening on Tuesdays from six to seven. It's being currently held outdoors, um, weather permitting, um, masks are still required. Um, and we've just had a lot of new uh, kids join the Logos program um, and learning how to be um, children of God. We also have our confirmation class for our high schoolers. Um, we have 10 high schoolers that are um, enrolled right now and they're working with Pastor John on Wednesdays from six to seven to um, further their understanding of their faith um, and preparing them for confirmation. Wow, so we've got a huge uh, program uh, in front of us, don't we? And, and this includes Sunday school. You didn't even mention Sunday school, did you? I haven't even mentioned our <laughs> offerings on Sundays. So that's just during um, non-Sunday times. Um, during Sundays, we also have our godly play program for K through five. 
We have our preschool Sunday school group for our four to five year olds, um, our youth middle school group, which is held from four to five and our youth high school group, which is held from five to 6.30. So there's definitely a great energy around all of these programs. I, I, I can see a lot of participation. What does it take to run all of this? This, is, this can't be easy. We have an amazing um, group of leaders for each of those different um, sections of Christian education um, that are really being innovative in the ways that they're trying to offer Christian education. Um, we are still in need of people to help. So um, if that's something that's interesting to you and you feel like that's a gift that you could give um, as you're thinking about harvesting your generosity, please contact me at christianed at arkandove.org. Um, we're always looking for more people to fill in with our teams. In general, we also need um, some materials and we are thinking of all these different ways that we can be innovative. Um, if the pandemic has taught us one thing is that change can be an amazing catalyst for um, all these different good things. So um, looking at the positives of what the pandemic has, has kind of forced or caused us to reimagine. How have things evolved? What, what does it look like now? Pre-pandemic, all of our um, Christian education offerings were done at the church. Um, the pandemic forced us to go virtual. Um, so we still have many of our Christian education offerings done through Zoom. A lot of our adult ed book groups are still done through Zoom. Instead of being in a contained spot, um, the safest spot we know based on the science is to do things outdoors. So all of our younger children Christian ed offerings have been um, flip-flopped and with the weather cooperating um, have been held outdoors. We've also somewhat modified some of our curriculums. Um, to bringing those materials outside. So instead of having a godly play classroom, for example, we're creating an outdoor godly play classroom. Some benefits to those changes um, would be more flexibility for the participants. Um, I think we've had increased number of participants due to the ability to offer things not just in person. And we have uh, brought so many new members to the church um, and new children into Christian ed. Some challenges to those as well though, um, which have been the materials that we might need to offer these things outdoors, to offer things through Zoom. Um, the location of where we hold things has been um, weather dependent for these outdoor classes. And so what does that look like? What are the things that we need? Do we need a tent? Do we need a tarp? Um, those are things that we hadn't necessarily needed in the past, and now we do. Um, and also our leaders' comfortability with doing things in person versus doing things on Zoom has changed the landscape of who is willing or feels able to provide that gift of being a leader for Christian ed. With all of these programs that we're doing, why do we, why are we doing this? Why is this important? I think it's important because at the core at Ark and Dub, um, we are all children of God. And that's a message we really want um, both our children and our adults to hear constantly. Um, we are a welcoming and affirming church. We want people to know that all are welcome. Doing Christian education um, helps us all, both children and adults who are involved, further our own journeys with God. It also helps us to build a sense of community and fellowship. I know as a parent, one of the reasons um, Ark and Dove became our home and the reason we decided to join the church is because we knew that all of the five of us in the Fox household felt a sense of community by coming to Ark and Dove. And I think that the Christian ed opportunities that my children had solidified that for them right from the get-go. They felt in included, they felt that they were heard, they felt that their journey with God was something that they could fulfill with the people here at Ark and Dove. Um, I also think that Christian Ed helps us to um, be mindful of being good stewards of the earth and helping our fellow neighbor. I think that a lot of the messages and lessons that we teach during Christian Ed help to um, encourage the children to think about those big ideas and, and ways, specific ways that they can be good stewards of the earth or ways that they could be a good um, fellow neighbor to people outside of the Ark and Dove congregation. Absolutely. So you uh, you will be coming up on a year as Christian Ed Elder. I imagine that you have 
uh, some goals for the future because you're, you're not done yet. <laughs> so, so I love what you're doing. Uh, it's awesome to see how we have evolved um, in this last year and, and what, what you have brought, uh, brought to, the, to the ministry. So what are your goals? One of the things, um, kind of thinking about our, our motto here um, with harvesting our generosity, um, we have a lot of people that are working hard at being sowers. We have a lot of leaders in Christian ed that are reimagining what it could look like. And if they had a wealth of materials, I'm wondering what other ideas they might come up with. We have an incredible group that is um, innovative, well-educated, um, and I think that we have not even touched the surface of how Ark and Dove um, could kind of change how Christian ed is offered. And I think that the things that we could reap from this would just be amazing. Um, some goals specifically that I have, looking at our, our needs for 2022, it is clear that we need to be able to serve more children and adults in a variety of ways. So the pandemic taught us that, you know, one way is not the only way. We need to think about offering hybrid options so that if children are receiving in-person Christian ed, can we also include children who might not be able to attend in person? This is gonna require some online teacher training. It's gonna possibly require technology equipment and training on how to use that. Um, it might require more materials. Um, our pastor, our youth pastor, Pastor John, has a closet full of random items. What if that he uses for his youth groups? What if all of our leaders just had a closet full of random items that they could use for a variety of purposes? That might really um, create an, an invigoration in their ways of planning and delivering Christian ed. Uh, we don't want to ability, uh, limit the ability for change and the ability for us to sow. We want to really expand that. Um, in addition, the pandemic caused us all to think about the safest ways, the safest environment for our children and adults to have Christian education. Um, so one of the things is that we've gone outdoors. Are our outdoor environments the best for this? Do we need to possibly change and create more outdoor classroom environments? And what would that entail? Um, and can those spaces also be used for outdoor fellowship so that it, it serves a, a variety of purposes for our church? If indoor Christian ed resumes, um, we also wanna ensure that the materials that the children have available to them are easily cleaned. And specifically, I'm thinking of our pre-K and nursery age children. Another goal that I have is that our church um, so much enjoys celebrating our big holidays. And the pandemic um, made me realize that we may need to do new ways of celebrating these big holidays. So as we think about potential pageants or Advent activities or Lent activities, what does that entail? And having um, the generosity of our congregation helping us reap those wonderful gifts, um, if you could help us sow with monetary gifts, that would help us reimagine what those celebrations could really look like. My last goal for Christian Ed um, is that us being a welcoming church we have um, a duty, and I say that with, with emphasis, I think to address any children or adults that might come with exceptional needs to our congregation. So um, as an educator, I know I have a student that I am currently teaching that needs some more proprioceptive feedback while he's listening to a story in media. Um, he needs a better seat for him. So that's something that I need to think about purchasing him for him so that he can have the best experience. We need to think about that from the church's perspective too. What are the best ways that we can deliver Christian ed to our congregants um, and their children? It also might need that we need other materials that we haven't even thought of. And that also might mean that I need training or our other leaders need training to educate ourselves about what are those best ways to become a more welcoming church and minister to those individuals. You've really thought this through and, and you really have a, you have a game plan. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so I guess my question is how, you know, what do you need from the congregation? But I think I'm hearing the message. <laughs> Um, we really could um, use financial gifts from the congregation. 
Um, we could also use your gifts of time um, and becoming leaders and becoming involved in these different Christian education opportunities. Um, one goal that I have is not to tax any one member of our congregation too much. Um, when we are asked to give monetarily and our time, um, that sometimes can be a drain. I want people to feel like they can give but aren't overgiving. And I just want to clarify when you say leader, because that might scare some people, but leaders can be many things. I use leader very purposely. A leader is not just the person that perhaps is delivering the lesson. Um, that's anyone who is in the room helping lead because we are truly all leaders. You are an adult that the children are building a relationship with. You are a safe person um, that's helping these children through their journey um, with God. And so I call you a leader and you are a leader. So if you're out there listening and you think you, you might not be right for the role, I can tell you there's a place for you. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for joining me today, for talking about uh, Christian Ed, for, for sharing uh, you know, the, the Harvesting Generosity uh, program that we're, we're trying to get through this fall. So, so thank you so much and, and all your energy and everything that you're doing uh, for the Christian Ed program. Thank you, Brian, for having me. And thank you to everyone out there for tuning in today. Um, uh, it's always great to be able to come into your home and or in your car or wherever you're watching uh, this program. Um, more details about everything we talked about can be found on the webpage or in the archive. October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so I just want to take a moment to send my thanks to Pastor John and Pastor Tim for all the wonderful work that they do in their ministry. So stay safe, get vaccinated, get the booster if you can. Um, have a great week and join us in the Zoom Fellowship just immediately after service, the live stream service. We'll begin in a moment.